Father, thank you for every day that you give to us. And thank you for today, the Lord's day. We're great, gracious, O Lord. Uh, we're grateful, O Lord, that we meet together and sit in your presence and you're in the midst as you always are. Lord, open up your heart to our heart today, your mind in our mind, your way, O Lord, in our emotions. Grant today that every single person here would have such a sense of the ways of God and that you would grant the grace by which every last one of us would walk in them, benefit from them. Lord, open your word to us today. And as Jonathan prayed earlier, the spirit of understanding rest upon the hearts and minds of everyone in this meeting. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, please be seated. Um, in recent weeks, I've seen wonderful prayers, uh, like wonderful answers to prayer and, and some, some great healings, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. But when I pray, I, um, I expect things to change or develop. You don't always see it immediately, but I carry that expectation in my heart. And um, I'm going to make some political comments, but these are not intended as party political, although they affect parties because they're sometimes the, um, on the receiving end of my prayers. But uh, four years back when the Palaszczuk government was elected again and I was fed up with not only the corruption but the ineptitude of that government after two terms, I prayed and asked the Lord to bring that government into judgment. And very soon you began to see exposure, stuff come to light that was so out of order and a whole lot of heat start to come upon that government because of, well, just the way things were. And there was more and more of that. Um, eventually the Premier herself pushed out and then of course the government gone now. And so it needed to be because you cannot keep a government in forever with that level of um, corruption and incompetence. And it applies to all sides, all governments, doesn't matter what kind of uh, party. I was recently in another state of Australia and in the parliament and in the office of a member. And this time what I was praying about was not Labor, but Liberal. And they weren't in government. They will be in, in government because the current government there has run its course and is even worse than the Queensland one was. But that wasn't the subject of my prayers. My concern was two strongholds within the Liberal Party, which is likely to come into government before long. But there are two cliques of people in that party that need to be dealt with and I was in Parliament praying for the Lord to bring those two groups, not the whole party, but those two groups into judgment. And I expect to see that in the course of time. Um, in, in America, we've just seen huge change and just as well. And what I'm rejoicing in is hope for Western civilization against all this identity politics that's become for years and years now, uh, become so powerful in Europe and in Western politics in general. Uh, I have said for years, it was evil, but it, as, a, as a social construct, as a cultural movement, it was a house of cards, and sooner or later it would collapse under its own weight of stupidity. And that you will see, but it was some years ago I suppose five or six now, that I began praying that there would be a cultural backlash against woke ideologies and identity politics and sexual politics. I mean, it is, it is foolish, it is irrational, it is corrupt, it's destructive of society. Western civilization for so long has had such a drift to it and it, it must turn. And for some years now, I've been pouring prayer into Australia for Australia to awaken spiritually. And I believe it will. I, 
I have a lot of hope for Australia, New Zealand, the Pacific, for a whole new fresh move of the Spirit of the Lord to awake, awaken the land to Christ. And all of us must have faith in, and we must pray and have faith to believe that Western civilization uh, can be saved rather than lost. Because the, the, this kind of drift that's been going on, it goes right back to the Enlightenment and to the French Revolution. This, this cultural drift away from Christ, away from the gospel, it's brought ever increasing darkness upon Western civilization. That only goes two ways. Either, either you get an awakening and, and, and light comes and you turn back to the truth, or else you get a collapse of civilization and other, uh, other nations take over. This is, this is the way it is. You want a future for your kids, you pray that the gospel will grip these lands again, and there's no reason you can't pray and believe that. And I, and I have high hope. Certainly have high hope for Australia. And every, every church prayer meeting I'm in, perhaps not the Sunday morning ones, but through the week, there will always be a strong prayer for me for Australia and New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Solomons, the Pacific generally, but it's got us. Uh, I always include New Zealand when I pray for Australia, but, but you must believe for an Australian breakthrough, a, a shift in the spirit of the nation. Anyway, I started praying five or six years ago. There'd be a cultural backlash against woke ideologies and, and all, the, all, the, all the, the corruption of our politics. And by the way, it's in, it's in all the parties. It, it's astoundingly bad how, how many fifth columnists have got into the Liberal Party on these kind of things. So I prayed for this cultural backlash. Now, as soon as I started to pray that, I noticed something. I noticed more and more journalists in daily papers writing against it start, and exposing it and bit by bit. And now it's common now. Not everywhere, not in all the media, because you know some of the media, it's a bit far gone. But see, this, that way of thinking has gone from universities right into now um, into the media, into teaching, into the police, into the courts. No, it's, we're going to need a cultural turnaround. Anyway, all I'm saying is we get prayers answered, but you need to pray the prayers and you need to have a faith that says my, my prayer will be answered and if I keep praying about something, we're going to see outcomes. Uh, wonderful. Anyway, um, that's all I'll say about that. Healings. Years ago, uh, early 90s, I was in a huge church in Melbourne 1,500 families in that church, and I wasn't there to preach on Sundays. I was there doing a um, planned giving program for them. They needed the money, and we were very successful with that. But while I was there, that, this church, 1,500 families, once a month on a Sunday night would have an evangelistic meeting. A lot of unsaved people would get invited. There'd be a huge crowd. So while I was there, they asked me if I would uh, preach in that meeting, an evangelistic message. So sure, I was happy to make like Billy Graham for the night do my bit. And they no sooner asked me and I got this sense the Lord wanted to heal. He wanted to heal people. So I was going to proceed and just do the usual thing and fight people forward for healing and, and lay hands on them. But within two days, and this by this time it's Tuesday, coming up the next Sunday, I get a visit from the pastor. This is a very conservative church. Uh, wasn't charismatic church, conservative evangelical church. The pastor comes to visit me and he says there'd been a meeting of the elders of the church and he'd come with a request from the elders that the next Sunday night when I preached the gospel, I would not heal the sick. Well, this gave me a little problem um, because I wasn't going to dishonor them wasn't, and I wasn't going to disobey. So you think, well, how do you heal the sick when you don't heal the sick? Because the Lord wanted to heal the sick. Anyway, as always, the Holy Spirit has an answer. And Come Sunday night, I preached the gospel as best I could and ran a gospel appeal and 14 people got saved wonderfully, including the teenage son of the senior pastor. I'm sure he was very happy about that. And, and so we prayed for them and sent them out for counselling. And then here I have this vast crowd and here was my chance. And um, so I took the line. You know, um, here's an opportunity for us to pray for everyone else tonight. And many people have needs. And, you know, there'll be family needs and uh, financial needs. And there'll be people who need jobs and, and there'll be people with health needs. So I didn't mention healing, just, you know, health needs. And there'll be people with other needs too, you know, family relationships. I said, and I, 
I want to pray and ask the Lord if he would help all of you with your needs no matter what they are. And so I said, look, if anybody has a need tonight and you'd like to stand in the presence of the Lord while we pray and ask the Lord to meet your needs, um, then, you know, stand. And if you like, you can stand along the front here. Or, Well, anyway, the crowd, the, you know, three quarters of this crowd arises. They get up. We fill the whole front of this vast place. And up half, big wide aisles like this, about five of them. The aisle's half, full, shoulder to shoulder, all the way halfway back. So we've got a crowd uh, and a lot of need to pray over here. So I, so I start and um, making sure that healing is not the first thing I talk about, right? So pray about this need and we pray about that and ask the Lord, Lord to meet these needs, all these you know, folk here tonight. And eventually I got to the health needs. And so I said, Lord, you know, you're wonderful when it comes to meeting need no matter what it is. And I, I lift these folks up to you tonight, Lord, whatever the need is, it's in the body or in the family. And, and right at this point, I thank the Lord for his power to meet needs, and in the name of the Lord Jesus, sent that power out. And when I said that, oh, it felt good. Like there was something about it that, that just felt like such a moment. It felt so good, I thought, I'm going to pray that again. So I, in my prayer, I, I moved on by a few sentences and doubled around, kept praying, because I wanted to come back and, and had another run. And uh, so I come at it again and once again, you know, thank the Lord, sent his power out. The second time I said it, there was nothing there. It was kind of just, just words, empty words, nice words, but nothing there. I thought, oh, well, isn't that strange? And I continued the prayer on and finished the prayer and blessed everybody and we closed the meeting. I found out later why there was nothing there the second time. It's because when I'd prayed it the first time, such power went out and people got healed all over the place. And it was a bit like that story of the lady in the crowd who pressed through thinking, if I just touch the edge of his robes, the of his robe, I'll be healed. And Jesus is looking the other way and people are bumping and he's trying to get through the crowd and instantly he feels, oh, power went out of him. It was that feeling so that he stops and says, all right, who touched me, even though it doesn't had. And so the reason I felt nothing the second time was this, this head of steam, if you like, it, the, the, it was actually the virtue, the, the, the virtue of the Lord Jesus, the power of Jesus had actually gone out and it wasn't there to send a second time. But people got healed all over the place. Down the front row was an 18 year old young lady in the church with her parents uh, she had anorexia, only her parents knew, nobody else knew. She was a youth leader in the church, instantly healed. Right up in the very back was a couple that had not even come forward to have prayer. She had serious case of juvenile ulcer, very painful condition for her. She, they never even got in the line, but uh, two days later, her husband says to her, how are you feeling? She says, oh, didn't you know I was healed on Sunday night? She thought he knew because when she's standing there in the very back row, she said this great ball of white light suddenly came out from, presumably from me, from the prayer and surrounded her and her husband and she was instantly healed. Well, it turned out he'd never seen it. She assumed because it had surrounded both of them, he'd seen it. Well, this was the kind of thing that happened. Now, this, this is healing power. And power is here today. And I'm going, to, I'm going to pray a prayer and send out a healing anointing right now. And later in, in a little while, um, I'm not going to take very long today because we've got a tight program. Um, we'll pray again. But in the last couple of months, um, we've had some diabetics healed. Now, this is a quite astounding thing. Uh, but of course, with, with that kind of, con you, you don't always know instantly. You pray for folks. And then as they go along, the doctor says, um, you know, you've improved and they reduce the medication. And, and then, you know, sometimes they take them off the medication because, you know, they can control it with diet. And so we've had now two or three of those. I think, well, this is one. And they're all folks that I've prayed for along the way. So I, um, I, I was in another place. We were down in New South Wales. And I've taken it upon myself everywhere I go now to ask if there are any diabetics present and get them to come forward and pray especially because I'm looking for 
I'm looking more and more for the power specifically to heal diabetes. And I think if I just keep doing this, we will get more and more, you know, one here, one there, until eventually you build up real grace, if you like, gift for that particular thing to help more people. Because I, I hate that disease. And then same principle applies to cancer. We must build up more and more power. Fortunately, over the years, we have seen a lot of good outcomes in, in that area. So, um, well, anyway, I was, I was in New South Wales a month or two back, small church, and I, I inquired, and there were two young women there, probably in their 30s, 40s, who had uh, diabetes, and I got the two of them to come forward. And it was the first one I prayed for. I don't know what the outcome is with the other, but the first one I prayed for, um, I began to pray for her and the Spirit of God came upon her and next minute she is flat out on the floor under the power of God. Well, I, I just kept praying for a little while and came home not knowing what the outcomes were. But that week I got a note from her pastor and um, uh, here's what the note said. Uh, she, the pastor names her. She said, uh, so-and-so who received prayer for healing during the Sunday service has received healing in her shoulder, amazing the physio, and also her eyesight, reversing the impending blindness. Um, it turns out now she can see the stars and the man in the moon for the first time in years. So her sight was going, diabetes causes that. And, um, but there's a little note here about her situation. It said that in recent months, so in the months leading up to me being there and praying for her, she had worked through much forgiveness. In, in other words, she'd been dealing with the issues of her own heart and her relationships, preparing the way for her healing. Now, she didn't know that she was preparing the way for her healing. She was just working on her heart before the Lord, becoming hungry for God, seeking God, but, but especially dealing with those issues of forgiveness. And it positioned her then to get hit powerfully with the power of God and you know those results. And I thank the Lord. Um, I was in New Zealand, of course, recently. After I got home, I got this text from the pastor. Um, and once again, most of the meetings I did there, I did about eight, I'd release that healing anointing over the meeting. We were getting sovereign healings. And um, for example, somebody there, a nephew who had a gym injury in his arm and shoulder, he felt, as I was just praying, praying for needs, <laughs> praying for needs, um, he felt tingling up his spine and the, and the Lord healed him of this gym injury. But two days later, there was a woman in the church who woke up to discover that her, her back was healed. And then her husband woke up, discovered his shoulder was healed. Where are these sovereign healings going on? Just as I was releasing healing power over the meetings. Um, but I got, um, there was a deaf girl healed too, a little infant, little six or eight month old had the hearing aids, although one was busted, she'd managed to break it. Pretty little hearing aid she had, but she was deaf and Anyway, she received prayer and got a got hearing. And um, oh, there were others. Uh, one young Maori teenage girl. Um, every night, this terror came upon her in a room. She just she was terrified. All this fear. Well, it's obviously a spirit. I prayed for her. I identified immediately what the issue was. Uh, she's back the next day, all healed, delivered. You know, some some that, that was that was more dealing with stuff in the spirit realm. But. Um, I got a note from the pastor after I'd got home. He'd gone into the office on Monday, but he said he was inundated by very excited people with long testimonies, backslidden kids returned, families saved, healings, deliverances. He says, thanks again, great output. He told me he went home from the office because he couldn't get any peace from all these people inundating him, long stories. Anyway, it's, all, it's, it's wonderful. So all I'm saying is the Spirit of God is present to meet your needs, but our, your need and mine is is to is is a faith need. It's to build up your, your faith. It's to build up your expectation of the Lord. It's to you know when particularly if you had a condition a long time, it's so easy to kind of accept it and get into the position of thinking, well, you know, I just got to make the best of it, and so then you end up in a kind of an unbelief where you're really not believing anything that's terribly helpful. Um, so um, anyway, we're going to do a little bit of work with this today. I'd have to quit very soon. 
But I, I read this from uh, Matthew 8. That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Um, David has been encouraging everyone to be really hungry for God. And for a few Sundays, you know, there's a lot of people been expressing that hunger and seeking the face of God. The, the emphasis I want to add to it today is that in doing so, in seeking God, wanting to know the Lord, wanting to know the Lord more and, and, and somehow have his grace and his power come upon you, there has to be within yourself um, a faith that is stirred up, an active faith that is believing God. So it's not just a prayer that, Lord, I want more, I want more, but a heart that says, I'm receiving more. I am meeting with God. The Lord answers these prayers. So you, you've, got to know how to, you've got to know how to take a hold of it, you know? It's a bit like... Um, Somebody can put a milkshake on the, on the counter of the milk bar, but you've got to know how to suck the straw and, and get, get the thing that is provided. There's a lot provided for us. You've got to know how to take a hold of it and receive it. And the, the core of that is stirring up a, a heart that believes, that somehow, somehow you refresh yourself in this. And, and it's not striving. It's, it's somehow a resting position where, ah, you believe. And, and that, that in itself is the gift of God. And the thing is, if you haven't quite got that, that's what you pray for. You're asking the Lord for this spirit of faith, or if you like, the gift of faith. It's not unlike the day when I had um, for four years. Now, those four years were 1974, 75, 76, and 77. 76, 77, I was Salvation Army chip pastor in, uh, in uh, Narrabri. I kept praying for sick people. I, I wanted to heal the sick, but for the first two or three years, never saw a single healing. But I, 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 I knew this is a need. We must break through. We somehow must find healings. And, um, and then I saw one or two. But in the end, it was in January of 1978, so after four years almost, when I was reading Psalm 103, that I came across this... Um, you know, it's verses 2 and 3 and 4, where it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, that's like an instruction. Don't forget all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. And I'm staring at this and what was I in 1978? I was 26. And from the time I was 10, certainly from the time I was 15, totally at home with believing emphatically in the heart that when you confessed your sin, you were forgiven, you were washed. The Lord chose to put that sin away and forget about it. As far as the east is from the west, this far has he removed our sins from us, the scripture says. And I can remember once using that quote, that quote from scripture to get a healing. I had something wrong in the body and I said to the Lord, Lord, as, as far as you have removed my sins from me, would you remove this sickness from me? And it instantly went. Because, you know, as far as the east is from the west. It's, it's amazing the handles you can get for faith. Well, I was totally, totally comfortable, you know, if I came across a fault or was guilty of a sin, I could bring it to the Lord and confess it. And I was totally at peace over the fact that I was forgiven and washed and you could have a clear conscience. And yet here I was reading this scripture. He forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Why was it so easy in my heart to accept one and be completely at home. And because again, it takes faith. Ah, oh, I'm cleansed, you know, washed. Why was it so hard to believe the other when they were written side by side in scripture? And this is where I went to my knees at my chair in the office and sought the Lord about it. I said, Lord, would you grant me the grace to believe both of these things equally? 
Now, the truth is, of course, we still struggle, struggle to believe them equally. But here's what happened. I went to my knees and asked the Lord, if you would grant me the grace to believe the second part like I did the first part. And immediately this response came from heaven. Now, probably four years of hunger and trying, and if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. The fact that I had pushed in four years of that perhaps had prepared me for a breakthrough, as, as these things do. But either way, that day I got a breakthrough. As I knelt there, asking the Lord to grant me the faith to believe the Scriptures, this thing spiraled down almost like from another galaxy. I saw it coming, even though I'm kneeling like this, and it dropped in, and I was so filled with the, I mean, the immediate thing I was obviously filled with was I believed that word. But of course, what I was filled with was the gift of God. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was filled with joy over that word. It, it was, you know, all of a sudden, that word was alive. It was true. Now, this is what all of us must do to some degree in the areas of life, and it's not just healing, but in the areas of life generally where your experience or your feelings are different to the Word of God. Your, your, your seeking after God's face is faith, faith, God's face is that you want grace to come upon you so that your, the way you walk in life, the way you live, the way you walk with God is something equivalent to what the Scripture says it should be. So this is where, this is why I'm saying when you seek God, when you get hungry for God, you must develop this expectation there's a grace to receive, there's a gift to receive. And you're in the process of actually receiving it. Something is to drop in you that changes everything. And so it's, it's not just an empty pursuit. Um, 2 Corinthians 1, I, wa I wanted especially this morning to show you this one scripture. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 18 to 20. As surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, Sylvanus and Timothy and I did, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. Now just think about this for a moment. If we go back to the middle verse, 19, in him it is always yes. Now he's applying this to the promises of God. The Old Testament is full of promises. In fact, I, I would think from memory, the majority of the healing promises are recorded in the Old Testament. There's a bunch of them in the New, but there's a large number in the Old, the promises of healing. And it doesn't hurt if you went looking for them and memorized a bunch of them, used different ones at different times depending on the need. But either way, the Bible actually has a lot of promises about healing. And... Um, how do you obtain the healing that's promised? Especially when you have a scripture like this. Now, bear in mind, you remember, the gospel of our Lord Jesus says that the new covenant is founded on better promises than the old covenant. Except that you can't find any better promises in the New Testament than the old in one sense. Uh, what might better mean? No, in fact, there are promises in the new but on the healing subject, on healing itself, the Old Testament is replete with promises that are as good as you get. And then the New Testament has more. So if it says better promises, yes, there are extra promises. There's a lot more grace available and it's more easily obtained. You've got to take the lead from this to say, well, the way has been opened so 
powerfully by Jesus Christ for us, that it's just a whole lot easier to find the grace and find the promises than ever it was. But do you remember that a leper came to Jesus and said to him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And he replied, I am willing, be clean. And you have to believe in your heart that he is always willing, always willing. And especially when you combine that with this particular scripture we've got here, verse 19, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, drop out that little parenthesis there, Sylvain and as I proclaimed it, was not yes and no. In other words, it's not that the promises sometimes apply and other times don't apply, but in him it is always yes, for no matter how many promises he has made, this will be a different translation of verse 20, no matter how many promises he has made, all of them are yes and amen. How do you then obtain it? The truth is this. It's there for the obtaining, even if between you and that thing that you want, there are some hindrances in the road. For example, if I come to walk down my veranda from the end of the house to the front door, and one of the kids has left a push bike lying across the veranda, Here's something that impedes the progress. In other words, you're going to stop and pick the thing up and lean against the wall or get it out of the road. You can't just walk straight through. Try, try stepping over it and it's a danger of tripping. Right? In other words, you can have a hindrance. Sometimes the hindrance is a snake there and you need to encourage its departure for the sake of the family. And um, generally, if you walk along, don't get too close, walk a bit more, the thing will see you and it'll bolt. And that's a happy day. And um, you don't have to scare it too much. Um, you know, they're in the end timid. They don't want to be found anyway, usually. Uh, but, you know, this can happen. So there can be any, you know, you could, um, we get a big wind, it'll blow over our pot plants, you know, next thing you know. So it can happen that between you and the thing that you need, there are some obstacles in the way and and so but but the door of the house is still there it's still your house there's still a door you've still got the key to unlock the door if need be you're entitled to go in the house hasn't gone anywhere and that's the way it is with these promises he's saying they're always yes in other words they're available if you can get to the door you'll get the door open but you might need to think about is there a hindrance, is there an obstacle? But there's no more common hindrance or obstacle than the fact that we haven't stirred up our something within ourselves by which we take hold of it by faith. The Lord's very gracious. He will often meet your need and you didn't even pray. I'll guarantee a thousand to one that goes on all the time. And then... He will often answer your prayer even when you weren't believing or didn't pray much of a prayer. That happens every day. But there are some things that because it's a real need and you can't seem to obtain it, your, your, your biggest hindrance will be somehow bringing the heart to the place that it takes hold of the thing that's actually put there for you to take a hold of. And um, in that process, sometimes the Lord shows you issues of bitterness, unforgiveness, uh, relationships. You know, he'll show you things, but it's so that you can remove the push bike off the veranda, so to speak, and open the way to the front door. Now, friends, um, I'm going to pray and release healing anointing. And then if there is anyone with diabetes here this morning and you'd like personal prayer, laying on of hands, I want you to come stand down the front and all of us are going to believe the Lord for, for bodily improvement. Now, I know there's type 1 and type 2, but, but miracles are miracles and healings are healings. And at least we can pray. It was, it was, it's within our reach today to put these things in the hand of God and see what breakthroughs we get.
Um, don't ever neglect medicine, proper professional advice. I don't, don't want anybody doing anything silly like, well, I've had a prayer, so flush the medicine down the toilet. Nothing stupid. You, um, you take care of yourself. You know, a bit like I say to people, while you're praying for cleansing, you still take a bath, you know? And, um, ha but we, let's just see what good health outcomes we can get for people as we pray and believe all the more. But if, for any of you that actually has an, a need, whether it's a health need or some other need, somehow try and bring this to the Lord and put it in his hands in a fresh way. So we, we're going to have two stages here in prayer. First of all, not only anyone with diabetes, any, anybody else, any, anyone with cancer, anybody with a serious problem in the body, it, it seems even... Um, joint pain. Well, I'm going to pray general prayer, release healing anointing. How about you all get in the spirit? Believe to receive this. And then um, anyone with these serious conditions of name, just step forward while we all believe for you. Father, thank you for the healing power of our Lord Jesus. Thank you for the love of God, our Father, who not only made us by his word, but has also provided for us the patriarchs and the prophets and the apostles and the scrolls and the scriptures and every word, every word you've spoken has power. Thank you for all the promises which are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And thank you, Lord, these promises pertain not only to the healing of our bodies today, but to every other need we have, especially our need to know you to walk with you, to be possessed by you, to be filled with the power of grace, to be made, to be conformed to the divine image. Thank you for the new birth, the new creation that's in us all. We bless the Lord. And Father, I receive from your hand today, from the hand of Jesus Christ, who rules and reigns today, I receive power, the power to heal the sick, the power of these anointings, the virtue of Jesus, the goodness of Jesus, healing power from God above. I declare it's upon this meeting. And so in the name of the Lord Jesus, I place the healing power of Jesus upon every one of you. I place it upon your homes and your marriages and your children. I place it upon your bodies, healing power from Jesus. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I release that healing anointing into every one of you. Send it out all, all over this meeting and even, even out over all the transmission lines, wireless ones all over the world. I send out a healing anointing today in Jesus' name. Lord, heal diseases, heal stomach conditions and bad backs and, and bad joints, heal organ diseases and blood diseases, skin diseases, Thank you, Lord, and heal relationships today, heal hearts, heal, heal depression, heal homes, heal marriages, heal children. In the name of Jesus, I send out healing power and I place it upon every one of you. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, healings will take place today and as people awaken on other days, healings will have taken place. We thank you. Anybody now present with diabetes and you'd like laying on of hands, just, just come forward. And um, we're all going to believe together for miracles. I would like to get to the stage where everywhere I went, there was no more diabetes. <laughs> well, I know, I know of a brother who used to go and preach in India regularly uh, years ago now, he went back and back to India, you know, two and three times a year. He would send out people on the streets to bring in anyone who had leprosy and pray for them, they'd be healed. He said it got to the stage that areas of India he'd go to, they couldn't find a leper. It's got to be like that for us too, with things like diabetes and other such things. Develop power. But you see, the power, I, I think power such as that or grace, in the increase of grace like that or the increase of anointing like that comes hand in hand with two things. 
One is the, the, the stirring up of the gift of God within us, which at the same time is actually the stirring up of our own faith. And so grace builds up. And the other is the perseverance, the willingness to press in, press in, press in. It gets more and more established as a grace. And the same principle applies to things other than healing as well. So Father, thank you for these here today. And I know there are others uh, amongst us. We pray, Lord, for the healing of this condition. That you would bless the health of these uh, who stand here today, each of them. You'd cause the functioning, the proper functioning of the, or, uh, the, the organs of the body and of the blood and that you'd heal them. Will we place in your hands today the, the conditions that they have, diabetic conditions, and ask that you heal. Lord, thank you. Thank you for each of them. So I lay hands up upon them. Lord, thank you for Max's healing. Everyone, everyone here today, just thank the Lord for his healing. Ask the Lord to heal him. The healing, the healing of the body. Thank you, Lord. And, and Lord, thank you. Each of it, each one, Lord, this is a precious sister, heal her. I rebuke the diabetes. We command the condition now be healed, organs healed, blood healed. Lord, healthy bodies, wholeness, wholeness in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I ask the Lord you'd remove diabetes from the church completely and from every person who has it. And all of those who are perhaps uh, have a weakness in the body where they're vulnerable to it in the future, ask the Lord, no more vulnerability. Your power, your grace, I release healing power over you. The healing of the body, in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for diminishing the diabetes until it's gone completely. Remove it, remove it from amongst us. Is there anybody here with cancer or some other very serious matter? and um, you want a healing prayer. Oh, right. Diabetes as well for Dorothy. Father, thank you for Dorothy. Thank you for her faithfulness, years and years of standing in the Lord. We bless her today. Lord, heal her today. No more diabetes. The healing of the body, of organs and of blood and the very functioning of her makeup. Dorothy, we bless you in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for the, the clearing up of this condition in Jesus' name. Um, people with other conditions, I want you to start believing the Lord and don't be frightened to come and get a prayer from me. We're going to believe God. Especially anyone too with um, joint problems, shoulders and backs and the like, hips and we're going to believe the Lord Father, thank you for the healing of joint pain and joint issues and, and injuries and sports injuries. Thank you, Lord, for their healing today. And I release that power over the church in Jesus' name. Uh, just one more matter I'll, I'll mention for everybody. And then I've got a prayer. I want everyone to participate in after this. One more prayer. But um, my daughter Elizabeth who um, for months and months of this year had been feeling unwell and been seeking you know, results. It took a while, but um, in the end, you know, something nasty was discovered in the lung and, uh, and a biopsy was inconclusive. The, the doctors thought it was cancer, but the biopsy said it was um, fibrosis. But they said that can happen where the, you know, the usual biopsy doesn't get a good grip on the thing. And then, so the course of action then was, um, you know, subject to a lot of thought and decision making because there was another biopsy available, but it's, um, it was very invasive and had a lot of nasty risks and side effects attached to it. But in the end, uh, that's what uh, happened this week in Brisbane. Um, anyway, she'd had kind of middling results and taking ages to get anywhere with dealing with it until until we started to really bring prayer to bear on the situation, as, as happened a few weeks ago. And then things started to clear up and things moved very rapidly. Once we got 
people praying into it. It's amazing what the outcome. Um, Elizabeth went for this biopsy on, um, was it Wednesday? She said the, the doctor spent nearly an hour telling her all about the, 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 the nasty side effects that could come. She, and of course, this one requires heavy, heavy sedation. It's, um, and she said, well, why are you telling me all this, saying I'm gonna be heavily sedated? He said, because in that condition, if some of this stuff starts happening and you don't know that it's uh, all under control and normal, you know, you, we said we can get some very nasty, he said, you, you can end up in intensive care. Um, but we had subjected that to prayer. I went and visited her in hospital Monday and especially sought the Lord that that thing would be so successful and so straightforward and so easy. Well, it was astounding. They were, they were in and out and no side effects and she was surprised, oh, over already. And um, anyway, no, it is cancer. It's lung cancer, but it's, they said it's a kind of lung cancer that only women who are non-smokers get. And apparently 18% of women who are non-smokers get it. Well, that's rather a high. Now, this is what I've been told, accurate or not accurate, but um, it's just, well, we pray then. Now, Heather Drayson, by the way, Elizabeth's in good company. Heather Drayson just had the same thing and just has had the surgery. They caught it early. She doesn't require chemo. Um, anyway, I'm just mentioning Elizabeth's condition because within maybe three weeks, she'll be having surgery in Brisbane. It's pretty serious. I've canceled my overseas trips in December. I will need to be here and um, Hazel and I help take care of the family. Elizabeth won't be able to lift anything, drive. She's moving house in that period too. So uh, it'll be family time for us. But um, we're gonna pray a prayer for Elizabeth. Like we, we, anyone in the congregation who something really serious like this comes up, we pray and we've seen so many good outcomes over the years and we're believing for good outcomes for Elizabeth too. How about you stand with me? We pray a united prayer for her. And then um, I've got one more prayer to pray for everybody. Anyway, lift your voice with me. And Father, thank you for the work of God going on in Elizabeth. Thank you for her grace, your grace to her right now. And let the arms of the Lord be all about her for her healing and her deliverance, her recovery, and Lord, we place Elizabeth under the care of God and we bless her. And thank you, Lord, you heal her and deliver her of this cancer. Let that cancer now go back. The way it came, go back in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for healing her. And we praise God. Amen. I've had numbers of pastors in Australia, their wives praying for Elizabeth these last few weeks. And it's amazing the words they're getting for her. And the grace of God that's flowing. I've heard some of these people pray and the sense of grace flowing. It's quite astounding. Now, friends, I'm going to invite um, this, this final item that needs our prayers is this. The lesson that came from me going to my knees over Psalm 103, you know, Lord, would you grant me the grace to believe? That's what I want for you today, to the Lord to give you the grace to believe God. It's, it's a gift of faith. And what I'd like you to do, is, as many as you're willing anyway, crowd down the front with me. Come and, come and stand here just like you might if you were about to receive a healing prayer. This is hunger for God, but it's more than that. You want the gift of faith. You, you want that, that grace to believe God in your prayers, any prayer, every prayer. And what, you're, what we're doing is asking the Lord if He would, by the Holy Spirit, release something in the heart that gives you this freedom to believe, this ability to believe God. You're looking for the spirit of faith. You're seeking believing faith. And uh, it's like, it's like an, the anointing of the Holy Spirit can take your, your, your natural level of believing and take it to a supernatural level where all of a sudden you believe. And I've, I've had this numbers of times in life and I covered it for you, this, this grace to believe God. And so I, I want to pray it over you right now. And then having prayed that prayer, I want you to read with me. We're going to put Psalm 103 up on the screen. 
and we're just going to read it together in closing today. So first of all, this prayer, bring, just lift your heart to the Lord. And in your own heart, you're saying, Lord, grant me the gift of faith. That is, this is, this is a, a gift of grace that comes upon you and releases your ability to believe. It's supernatural. Father, thank you. This is a real gift. It is a real gift. And you give it. You delight to give it. And you've said, how much more will you give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? And Lord, here we are standing before you today and asking. We're seeking the face of God today. And Lord, I pray on behalf of everyone standing before you, young and old alike, Lord, none of us are deserving. I thank you. It's not something we have to deserve. We bring our hearts to you. Wash every heart right now. Let there be the washing of the water of the word over every heart and all these lives. Wash them and deliver them and grant them freshness in Jesus. And now, Holy Spirit, come. I ask that you'd place into every heart here today the gift of faith. Grant, Lord, to each of these believers that, that powerful moving of the Holy Spirit upon them where suddenly their heart simply is released to believe God. Lord, thank you for the gift of faith. And in the name of Jesus, I receive from God the Father today the spirit of faith. And I place it upon every one of you and I release it into your hearts. Lord, grant grace for every heart today to believe God. Now, every one of you in your own heart, just, just say to the Lord, I receive your grace. I receive the gift. I receive the blessing. I receive the Holy Spirit. Lord, your power come upon the believers. And I pray that in their prayers, when they pray at home, they'll find themselves so much more easily believing. In prayer meetings, they'll find themselves alive with believing faith. Lord, bring the whole church alive, I pray, with the gift of faith. And so we give thanks to God. We bless the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to read Psalm 103, just the first 19 verses as a, as a shared reading. We'll all read out loud. But here's a classic piece of scripture good for you to stir up your heart over and just let's just note what comes along this is the kind of thing you should be believing day by day in your prayers let's read together from verse 1 bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquity and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him, for he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place knows it no more, but the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. 
The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. When the word of the Lord goes into our hearts, it's amazing how much it strengthens us. It, it wouldn't hurt to get that psalm out at home and soak it, soak it in, take notice of it. The Lord is mindful of our needs. He satisfies you with good things. And so, you know, lift up your hearts to the Lord and, and begin to pray and believe your prayers will indeed be answered. And so, Father, thank you. We, I place upon your people today the blessing of God Almighty and the peace of the living Christ. I place upon your hearts and your minds the Lord be gracious to you and to keep you and to lift up his face upon you. The peace of Jesus is upon you. Lord, I thank you. These words are true. And I commend all your people to your grace this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's morning tea time together. Hopefully, I'm, we're all going out believing. I'm going to get more, more prayers answered. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>